So today we are going to make an advanced transition for a texture animation that we are using for this iPhone course. Uh, I've already got my iPhone set up. You just saw what we're going to be making and I'm going to select the empty first and I will select this entire iPhone. Then I will press Alt P and clear and keep transformation. Then I'm going to delete the empty because we don't need it anymore. As a matter of fact, the empty will be a problem later on if we try to use geometry nodes. So I'm going into this mesh and right now I will select this entire edge loop and it should connect all the way across and I'm going to click on select, select loops, select loop in a region, and I will press shift D, Z, bring it upwards just a tad little bit, P, and separate the selection. Now all we have to do is set it up for this simulation. So I'm going into geometry notes, I will press on new, and now we can start working on this. Right over here, I will click on shift A, type split edges and I will split the edges of our mesh. It is already a dense enough mesh so now all of these faces are separated. You can see it in edit mode but you will soon see what is going to happen. Because I'm going to bring in a scale elements node right over here and every single edge is an element so I'm going to scale this and you can see right away what it's doing if we change the scale of this. It's going to scale all of these split edges at once. And this is what it looks like. Now we don't want to have this happen on the entire mesh at the same time. So we actually need something to drive our skill. And the way we're going to do it is simply by bringing in a UV sphere. I'm going to use UV sphere. I like using UV sphere. G and X. And I will go into the object properties tab, go to visibility and I will set this to uh, first we have to go to cycles and now I'm going to select the iPhone model. It's iPhone model 2 and I want to bring in that UV sphere that we just created, sphere it's called. I'm going to bring it into our geometry nodes editor. And now we have something to drive the scale of this animation. And the way we're going to do it is by setting this to relative. I will drag this geometry into a proximity geometry. So geometry proximity. And basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select this model. I will press M make its own collection, I'm going to call it Geometry Nodes iPhone. And I will deselect the rest of the collection except for the UV sphere. So we do need to keep the UV sphere, make a separate collection for it, proximity. Let's turn the rest off for now. So we're only working with this. G and X and you can see that it is removing itself. It's also showing up again because the sphere is moving past a certain point. But if we scale it up, that is not the case. So especially if we scale it up from here, everything will be removed. But it's still not moving upwards and maybe it's not even strong enough. Maybe we want to have a stronger influence for this. In order to get that, we need to bring in a map range node, map range, bring it right in there. And we can change the from max and that will decide how far this is going. Now, of course, the two min will decide how big the scale of each element is. So we're basically going to work with this. And now we can bring this to life. There is a slight problem because we actually want to have it come into existence. So it's the wrong way around. And in order to fix that, I'm going to set the two min to one and the two max to zero. And now if we play this animation, scale it upwards, let's increase the from max for now so you can see what's actually happening. We are acquiring this new texture. And that's basically the way that we're going to do it. That's the entire way that this animation is going to be set up. And I'm going to set it to the right side. And if we scale this up, the phone will come into existence. So we're not quite done yet. We have to displace this as well because I thought it would be pretty cool if we have a wave going on there. And we can simply do that by adding a set position note and adding a noise texture. And plucking the color into the offset will show you that it is being displaced in the entire position. Now I haven't found a way yet in order to make sure that it's exactly on the right spot, but we're going to fix that later on with a different technique. First, I'm going to bring in a factor math because the noise texture is making sure that this is skewed and we don't want it to be skewed. So I'm going to set this to subtract 0.5 and now the noise is going like this. And that also looks pretty cool. But as you can see, the noise actually distorted our entire object and it's not moving along with our proximity. So we can change that the way we're going to do it simply by bringing in another factor math node, multiplying, plugging the map range into this factor. And basically nothing is happening. It's still being distorted, although it is being distorted a little bit more at this edge instead of at the outer edge. So distortion happens gradually as well. Uh, but what we actually want to do instead of having this weird wrapped mesh is giving it a specific axis to work on. So I'm going to bring in a separate XYZ vector into this one and the Z should go into the offset. Uh, but we also need a combine XYZ. So combine XYZ 
set z in the z and the vector into the offset. And now it should only work on the z axis. And that is actually the case. So it is moving upwards and downwards. If we play around with the scale, you can see what's happening. So if we set this to one, for example, it will look like this. And now here's the trick because this is still not a wave. So what I'm going to do is plug this map range into the vector of the noise texture. And now look what happens. We actually get this wave-like effect. And I'm going to increase the from max for a slight second now, simply so you can see it. But it is waving as such. If we increase the scale, there will be more waves like this. And now we can actually make a very cool wave transition simply by animating the skill back to zero as it ends. I will show you exactly what I mean later on. Uh, but one thing that I want to do is make sure that this is laying on top of the correct position. So in order to get this animation going, all we need to do is get this collection, turn it back on, and you can see that it's actually moving underneath our original iPhone. And we don't want that. We actually want this to be a very subtle effect. So the first thing that I'm going to do is set the detail to zero. And now our waves will be a lot more clean, but it's still going underneath the iPhone. And the way to fix it is actually by copying this multiply, bringing it right over here, set the X and Y to zero. And now we can play around with the Z axis. And if we now play around with this, the Z value will change the height of the waves. So I'm going to set both of these to zero, make sure that it looks something like this. Very subtle, and uh, we can always bring it upwards just a little bit, something like that, but you also don't have to do anything if you don't like that. G and X, and we get this wave pattern. But the thing that we need to change first is to go over here, go to the Apple logo backside material and copy it. Because now, if we go into the shader editor, we can change these colors, to a red color, for example. And let's set this to a reddish color, this one as well. So let's change the color of the Apple logo as well. If we bring this upwards, you can already see where this is going. Set this back to the geometry node editor. Let's bring it on top to make sure that all the waves are aligned. And as soon as we scale this up, things will start to happen. But one thing that I'm noticing is that our scale is not reaching the final output because that's only happening right near the sphere. But if we change the noise texture scale to zero and scale this up just a little bit at a certain point right here, it is working. But we actually want to increase the amount of that point. So we can increase the from max and move it forward. And then the scale is increasing until it is actually being covered entirely. One way to remove those edges in between is actually by increasing the 2 min. So if we set the 2 min to 1.05 for example, we are already getting closer and 1.1 should actually do the trick. So right now, if I move this away, we get our cool looking animation. And we have to play around with this map range node in order to make it look even smoother. But this is basically the original setup. Now if you increase the scale like this, we actually get some waves and if we move this sphere, the waves will be moving along with the sphere. And then until this texture is entirely scaled. So now the texture is basically done, but the scale of the noise texture is messing things up. And you might also want to change this color uh, of the camera plate. Set it to a reddish tone that kind of aligns with the rest that we've got. Something like this. Now, how are we going to finish this up so it actually looks good? Well. The way to do it is actually quite simple. All we have to do is drag up our timeline. Go over here and set the scale to 31 as it is. Go to frame, maybe let's say 72 or maybe 100. Let's do 100 for now. Go to set the scale to zero, press O. And on frame 100, we want the entirety of the iPhone to be visible. I'm going to bring this sphere right over there and make sure that there are no edges left. So we have to play around with the from max. So increase the from min if you must. And this is the point where the entire iPhone is being transitioned. And if we move this backwards, you can actually see it coming into existence. So on frame 100, we want to press I on this UV sphere. Then go to frame zero, G and X, move it backwards. And let's see what's going on now. There's some wave coming in. It's way too erratic, it's way too much. And I also want to change this to linear. So I'm going to select both of these, press on T and click on linear. And it's way too much, it's way too much. So go right over here, set the scale maybe to 30, should do the trick. Why is it so erratic? Because of this one. 
the multiply should be a very subtle number. I would suggest using a pretty small number right there. So 0.1, maybe 0.15 could also do the trick. And now it is sort of coming into existence. Now, the reason why we need to make two shots is because the ending is a little bit erratic for my taste. And it's also sticking out a bit on the top. So we could place it down and keyframe it like on frame 100, it should be over here, press I. And then on frame zero, it should be a bit more upwards, press I, because we don't want the waves to enter through. But you can see that there are some problems with that. And of course you can try and fix it in this way. I'm not going to stop you if you will, but I'm not going to do it like this. I'm simply going to fake it by moving upwards, bringing in a curve, circle, scale it out, take our camera, just right over here, go to the object constraints, set it to follow path, select the curve, press N, set all the location transformations to zero, and now the camera is on the curve, then click on track two, track two, well, let's make an empty to track two, empty, sphere, select this camera, track to this sphere. And now if we enter the camera and select our curve, we can play around with the way that we're showing this. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right over here. Maybe I'm going to scale it up. And I'm not doing this in the camera, by the way. I'm actually doing this on the curve. So I'm going right over here, press I, go to frame 100, R and Z, press I. This one, this UV sphere, shouldn't be visible. We go over to the object properties, Go to visibility and deselect it from camera. Later on, we can actually deselect it in renders as well. So visibility, renders, turn it off. And let's see. Uh, oh yeah, we actually brought this down. It should be upwards until it doesn't pass through our original plane anymore. We can select our curve circle. Let's make sure that it's a bit more to the top. And uh, we can select our curve circle, go over to the object properties, delta transform and rotate on the X, for example, and see what it gives us. And maybe we want to take the keyframe from the noise texture and bring it to frame 50. We can even bring it further, like frame 70. Increase the scale maybe or decrease it. What I find is that it would be nicer if we actually change the map range for the noise. I'm going to duplicate this one, bring it right over there, cut it out, distance into the value. And now we can spread out the from max just a little bit more in order to control our waves. So something I'm going to set it from, from min, maybe just a little bit, 0.36 from max could go a little bit further. And the waves are stopping too fast, so I'm going to move the keyframe to approximately 120. I'm going to set the map range node from min to zero, and now everything should look a bit more wavy. There are some white areas, so we have to move it upwards just a little bit. So as often is the case with geometry nodes, we have to play around with these values in order to get to the desired results. And I'm going into the curve, and I will open this up on the graph editor. Then right here, there should be only rotationary movements. So I'm going to close everything else off. I'm going to select all of this, A and dot, and I will actually just set this to individual centers, S and X, and let's see what it does. But it's moving very slowly, then it is moving a bit quicker. The camera animation is already done when the other animation hasn't even started yet. So what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to select this entire curve animation and bring it all the way over here. And what I want to have happen right here going to select the curve, I'm going to press I, and now we get an extra keyframe that you can see right here. And I will take this one from our last keyframe, G and X, and make sure that it goes very fast. So it's basically transitioning into the other shot. That's what we want. I'm going to select this one as well, handle type to free, bring this upwards and make sure that it's abruptly moving the final bit. We can even bring this one upwards just a little bit. So now we have an animation that is taking place only from frame like 60, so I'm going to render this out from frame 60 all the way until frame 104. And for the next one, I'm already going to set up the camera. I'm going to bring in a new camera, Shift A, camera, view, cameras, set active object as camera. So this is our new camera now. So if I click on seven and troll Shift zero, RZ 90, RC 180, we already have another 
type of location for this camera. And I'm going to set this to, and basically what we want to do now after we've rendered the other one, by the way, so don't do this already. But this one should be entirely finished on frame 120. So let's have it start from frame 120. And what I actually want to do is delete this, remove this, then go over to this texture and change it to red. And then it will be perfect. Then it will be the best texture. Because now there are still some split edges in the iPhone model itself. So this one still has some split edges. Doesn't look entirely well. We close up on this. There are some issues with it, uh, but in movement you will not notice. But for the second one, we actually want to remove this one, turn this one to the exact red color that we just created. So I'm sure you'll be able to figure out how to do that. Uh, just as a reminder, it's right over here to the Apple logo backside. Uh, what you can do is select a new color and select the Apple logo backside red and do the same for the camera plate. That's basically all you have to do. Going back into the camera, I'm going to press I. So let's move forward 60 frames to frame 180, RZZ, and let's have it rotate real slowly. And GZZ, let's have it zoom in as well, just a little bit. And go into the graph editor, control tab. Let's have only the C location. So let's open that one up, select it, A and dot. And we want it to come in fast in the beginning. That's important. And it's moving slowly towards its end position. Something like this. But we also have rotation on the, let's say, what is it? Z axis. So let's open that one up, let's click on it, and let's do the exact same thing. So then it's coming in fast, and then it will be slowing down towards the iPhone. So now all we have to do is render both of these out in separate folders, and then we will have two renders, one where the transition is happening. Of course, play around with your keyframes until you get something that you like, and then switch over to this shot by speeding up the final animation of the previous camera, speeding up at the beginning of this one, so then we have a smooth transition going over into each other. We actually replace this texture with the red one. So no one will notice what trickery took place. And that's the way to do it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, please click on like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. I get the money and it's right on cue. Keep the duffel bag up inside my coop. Hold a couple racks, tell them I love you. You want to be a boss, do it like I do. Uh.